Hey folks, Engineer 775 here on the job. Another job. We are we got like seven ground mount installations to do and we're we're just running out of year. Um, but we finally got some break in the weather and we're getting back on it. So we're gonna do a 56 panel, 228 panel ground mount um, in this site with two stacked Solarks, and they're just gonna be stacked as a grid tie system first. And um, and then later on, the customer's going to add batteries. So it's kind of a cool move. It's a different one. We haven't done this before, um, where we're stacking without batteries. But we've uh, this started as kind of a DIY. We would come do the ground mount, and the customers asked us to do some of the electrical for him. So we're we're here. So we're going to do it. We're going to help them. All right. Let's tell you what's going on here. We've got our panel staged. We use the rainy weather to get our materials over here. Ground mounts, Sinclair ground mounts over here. We've got this, uh, our post line weed eated and ready to go. And uh, there'll be two. So we made sure our inner row spacing, this one in the front, which is higher, isn't going to shade the one in the back, which is lower. And I added a little safety factor on that. I use helioscope to do a quick and dirty modeling of the arrays and the jobs. It's a real helpful tool and uh, get you started but then you get to get to the site things change and slopes and stuff that you can't pick up with the software so anyway we're good we've got this laid out we've driven one post we've got some issues with the driver i'm not getting the flow return from the hammer back to my machine very frustrating but the first post drives good and then it gets hot and starts messing up so if i can get four posts in We'll build this one while the machine cools, and then we'll go do the four posts and stagger it. And uh, it's just the way it's going to be until I can figure out the return. And waiting on my SV40 Yanmar, which is an upgrade with a better PTO, with a better pump, dedicated hydraulics for the front for any accessory. So we'll have two of these little babies uh, digging on the job. They have been a game changer for us. The little Mini X has just been awesome. For our water jobs, our solar jobs, tree cutting jobs, firewood, farm jobs. And we're about to do a lot of posts. But anyway, that has nothing to do with the solar. So we're going to be bringing, we're going to take these two arrays. We're going to put a pull box here and a pull box with IMO disconnects here. Take inch and a quarter over, land everything here, and start with our two-inch conduit. And the customer wants to do the ditch. He brought, he has his own mini. It's like, everybody's got a mini here. So it must be nice, huh? Um, so he's going to dig to the house. And then we'll show you the cool moves. We're going to work there with PDBs and 200 amp disconnects and re-adding um, terminals, uh, lugs, to the 400 amp service instead of doing the piercing connectors. A little more robust. All right, let's get to work. All right, we're gonna do a new move for us. This Willis has introduced us to. Instead of doing the piercing, insulated piercing taps, we're gonna just put a lug, which is kind of nicer, a little more robust. So he's pulling the bus bars out of the 200, uh, the 400 amp service. And he already put this lug up here so we can land our SER cable, 200, our 4 aught on line one and then line two. He's going to add another lug. And then we're going to use a fusible disconnect. All right, cheer. So, and we're putting 175 amp time delayed fuses in there. So, uh, this is. That's still hot. This, that's still hot. Don't touch it. The bottom is still hot. Yes, sir. All right. Well, cool. Well, we'll show you the finished product. So now we've got both lugs on on these bus bars, so we can actually land those hot, um, our four hot, and then we're going to put this disconnect over here. So we're good to go. Put the give them some power back. I'm going to put another grounding lug on this ground bar, make life a little easier. Okay, well, we would have wrapped up a lot sooner. Well, we would have had probably this back array built if that driver would drive and not overheat. So, getting a little frustrated with that, if you couldn't tell. So, we'll let the machine cool down, get here in the morning, pound those the rest of the way. Very, very frustrating. But, it's going to look awesome here. It's a great solar site. 56 modules, they're going to be screaming. Customer decided he wanted to do the ditch. I'm kind of glad, because I don't like hitting 
customer's stuff and he hit his own septic, which he's fixing now. So I won't show you that. All right, a little stacked Solark action going on here. Six foot wire way, two Solark 12Ks. Eventually, we're gonna turn one of these panels into critical loads, but for now, the permit and the job is just to grid tie these. And then we're planning a stack of batteries here, probably at least six arcs. We'll uh, decide when, the, when he's ready for batteries. And then uh, we're gonna combine these in the wiring trough with a Polaris right now, or if my PDB comes in in time, I will do a PDB because it's nicer than the Polaris, but this is my move. Got the latest uh, parallel stacking application notes from Solark. Make sure we get all our settings right. Master and slave and all the correct settings there. And then we're gonna bring some, uh, we're gonna use some SER cable. They had all this SER cable here. We're gonna combine into, and in one side of the, of the PDB, we're gonna come through SER cable Put a pipe, we'll pipe it up, something like that. And then we'll come out and go into, we're gonna go into the disconnect and out of that disconnect, we're gonna come back in here and then go over into the panel. So we've got to knock that hole out too. And then we'll uh, land in those lugs I showed you that's in the meter base. That way we can hide all the ugliness we don't have to do any plumbing or conduit outside and it should neaten it up so that was willis's call where's that willis what you talking about where is he he's somewhere over there hi there's somebody is that willis huh? Huh? <laughs> oh man so um anyway that is the dual soul arc project we're working on just cleaning up so day one pretty good got the inverters up ground mounts going disconnects up we should have this thing pretty much done in two days day two we did get the post pounded in it was a little painful still trying to figure it out but we're getting ready well we've trenched between the two put some pipe in so we're going to bring all the power to this pull box and two IMO disconnects. And then we'll transition to eight. It's about 300 feet to the inverters. We'll have uh, eight runs and a ground. Oh yeah, I gotta get ground rods in. So we're getting there. Staging these panels. We should get all these panels at least on. We're not gonna finish this job today. It's Friday, but it's coming along. It's doing well. Looking good. Aberdoodle is the master of the pull box. Wes has got everything staged. All right, end of day two. We've got, we're gonna bring the PV in through this pull box. We got, are you showing it off, Willis? Or are you just closing it up? We got our AC disconnect and um, we'll show you the connections on Monday. We're, we're just about done with the AC side of things. So it's looking good. And uh, if it wasn't for broken solar panels, we'd probably be done today. Oh, another lovely solar day. Day three, wrapping up this 56 panel, two ground mounts. And we're going to be pulling our home runs in there. And I wanted to just check. We brought a, we pulled that array over to this pull box. So I'm just going to check some voltages, see how consistent we are, and make sure our polarity is correct. So, I don't know if you can see that, 305.8, next string, 306.5, okay, next string, 306.1, and then 305.9. So, all consistent, all polarities correct. So, we love these IMO switches, and uh, I'm just going to come up now and land. Um, this disconnect is for that array back there, and this one is for this array. And now we're going to pull in. That's what that is. We just got the trench inspected by this county. We got about a 300 foot, shy of 300 foot pull of uh, number eight THHN. that we will land in here and then land in. We have two Solar 12Ks. We got plenty, 
of uh, MPPT channels to, to handle this PV. This is going to be awesome. It's about 22.5 kilowatts and um, grid tie to start and they'll be adding battery soon. But for now, we're going to get it going as a grid tie system and get uh, 20K heading that way. Sometimes you just need to spend a little bit more money and buy the 500 foot reels for your under 500 foot long poles. And um, this one's about 300 feet. So there's gonna be 200 feet left on these reels. But if you ever go to a, uh, a supply house and have them cut your lengths, it's such a nightmare. So we just set it up on our trailer. This is our redneck pole station. Uh, cram a little two inch 45 in the box so it kind of setters it up we put a plastic bushing on there so nothing's rubbing we use some lube and makes the pole safe effective and you got extra makeup wire for the next job so don't cheap out and try to buy cuts you'll spend all day untangling all right now we got to get pulled into the mech room so uh pass the inspection trench is back filled well, roughly, roughed in. And uh, now we're gonna get it in the house. Make sure we got enough to make it to the two Solarks. Okay, all it is all coming together. We've got our bypass figured out. But first, what we ended up, ended up getting some heavy lugs and we just daisy chain a double lugged, this transfer switch, some Polaris for the neutral, make it nice. So this is our bypass, 200 amp bypass switch. And that's got some big honking power distribution block, four rod on this side. And then we're combining the solar arc output on the left side of that power distribution block in number four. Okay, a little bit overkill, but we like it. But we got a lot done. We got the wire pulled in, 300 foot wire pull, eight number eights in the ground. In here through the pull box, We've got our AC disconnect with 175 amp fuses in it. So it's gonna be really nice. I'm working on a stack of arcs here in a rack. And, but for now, for now we're gonna do grid tie. It's got 22 and a half kilowatts. Be uh, cranking some power back, hopefully zero their power bill. That is the goal. Okay, solar's done, solar's pulled in. AC side is almost done for grid tie. So if you got any questions about stacking inverters, um, this power distribution block, I could put eight of these inverters in. Well, maybe not, maybe six uh, amperage wise. And I think they're 350 amp blocks, but so that's that part of the job. The solar is doing great, hooked up, long ways away from the house, wanted to be hid. And uh, there it is out there, nice little solar field. And then I'll show you the AC side. It's finished and landing. There's our little pull box for our solar. There, and then I'm gonna put a 175 amp time delays in here. Got that landed, labeled. And Willis did an awesome move. We didn't have to pull conduit. He did all the wiring behind the band so hit all the ugliness, and then uh, he's about to land. He's, I showed you those lugs that he put on, L1, L2. So he's got to do some landing, landificating. How's it going, Willis? It's about to be done. About to be done. So he's done extremely well on this. This has been kind of a fun little job we didn't even know we were going to have, because this was a do-it-yourself turned into... Okay, Scott, do it yourself. And uh, Willis is helping. He's still, are you still a SunPower premium dealer? <laughs> Just kidding. Oh. <laughs> so, the cool thing about this job is the customer's doing his own ditch cleaning up and we didn't have to hit his septic or tear up his water lines or hit power lines. So, there you have it. 22 and a half kilowatts about to be unleashed on this place. Okay, I think we're done, but we'll be back for the final. Final commissioning and settings, and I don't know when we're gonna do that, whenever Willis tells me to. All right, 
right, last day on this uh, grid tie dual solar. We do not have batteries, but uh, the customer has discussed them, and we're going to actually put a stack of arc batteries here um, for the next phase. But this was a DIY project that turned into our project. And just want to share, if you're installing a Solark, one of the tricks on a dual Solark grid tie with no batteries we have found is to just start them individually, get them up and running. Uh, some of the manuals aren't up to date with the latest instructions, so sometimes just call Solark and find out what the best way to do things are. The manual said you had to do two separate plants. For comms, you do not. You can do one plant and then add so if this is going to be the master just start with this one get this one on connected and then you can go into the PowerView Pro app go into the equipment tab then the gateway tab and then add the next inverter so it'll come up as one plant which is nicer you'll have one plant with a full capacity and you'll be able to dive down into each inverter but it'll come up and show your whole production for the whole facility Again, this is 22.96 kilowatts of solar, and uh, we're running the two 9Ks. So we've passed our AHJ inspection, so I'm going to shut it down, and then the utility, which is Duke Power, is going to come out and do their meter swap, and then we'll be able to fire these babies up. All right, if you got any questions or would like to do a system like this, there's a lot of people doing dual solarcs and triple solarcs these days wanting to go off grid and have enough power to do whatever they want. So we can do nine of them. So just let me know. Happy to help you do some more. So we'll sign up, do a consultation. We'll design you a system and get it to you. And uh, I think that's it. The guys did an awesome job. And now we're going to go get wet. All right. Engineer 775 signing out.